Okay, we were going to talk Black Star. So there was some conversations that uh, Coop and I had, you know, I guess it was on Twitter and just even offline, of the fact that when people are talking about albums of the year, not a lot of people are bringing up Black Star because they don't have access to the album. And it got us to thinking, was the way that Black Star actually put this album out a bad thing for them or a good thing for them? What do you think? I'm not loving it for them because here's what happens. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. And I realized this when I was talking to my man Holland yesterday. Well, what you really did was that you put yourself in a space where only a core audience of real pure core hip hop heads and media people who want to review your music are going to immediately access your music. It's not available for the random person to get acquainted with you and become a fan of yours. And that is a problem. And they are doing themselves a major disservice. Because here's what I thought about. Mm -hmm. I thought about all the artists that I wasn't originally fans of that I ended up being fans of. And you know how I ended up being fans of theirs? Accessibility. Accessibility. I had access to go through enough of their stuff. I'll give you an example of somebody who I champion on here frequently and exist in a total another realm. Oh, I wasn't a Rick Ross fan at first. No, I love hustling. Right. That's one of the best hip hop records ever, but not a Ross fan. But over the course of time, because of the accessibility, I popped up one day and I was like, yo, this dude's pretty dope. I think I need to listen to his project. Mm-hmm. And when you put your project somewhere where it's not available for everybody and they have to pay a subscription to a site that they're maybe not privy to or familiar with just to hear your music, well, I'm going to explain something to both of them that maybe they didn't understand. And this goes for the producer as well, unfortunately. None of you guys have been multi-platinum acts in this industry. You don't have the following that you think that you have. You have a true hip-hop following, which is fair, which is valid. Mm -hmm. How is that following doing you right now? Because here's what happens when you give limited people access. All those people, like I'm in the minority, I do not feel like their first album was a classic from this head group. Most people who are heads like you and I do feel like this was a classic. So for the heads, this was a disappointment. That's all the people who copped the album because of the platform that you delivered it to. The hardcore heads who think your first album is a classic, the hardcore heads who love hip hop and lyricism, and the media people. Well, between you and me, we happen to cover all three of those bases, but that shit ain't good enough. So them niggas did themselves a major disservice, and I would like to read Holland's comments. <laughs> Andre Shashir says, Luminary sounds quality on my end uh, wasn't good. I'm sorry, Luminary sound quality on my end wasn't good. The sound quality is not good on Luminary. He's right about that. Mm. Well, see, you know, I, I think, and that was one of the critiques, too, was the engineering of the album. I didn't realize that it was the platform. Okay. This okay, is where, well, this is where I'm going to go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, no. So I'm just going to go through some of the conversation that Holland shot me. He shot me the Logic uh, Carnival featuring AZ thing Monday at, like, midnight, right? Mm -hmm. I said, great album. His best work, in my opinion. This is what Holland takes me back. I said, I can't go that far, but it's absolutely solid. He is still underrated. While we are talking, that was personal talk. Boom, 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 boom. Mm -hmm. This is exactly what he said. This is where we go. We were talking about a couple of other things. He said, supremely disappointed with the Black Star album and put a sad face emoji. Holland's not the type of man that drops emojis, okay? <laughs> you feel what I'm saying? You know how you know right. some dudes and some dudes don't do emojis? Holland's one of those guys. It's like he said it was super disappointing and he dropped emotion. It's like that means he's pissed. Listen to my response. This is where I do my work and a lot of my journalism happens within the sphere of the people who I know know stuff. I said, really? I said, I loved it. I said, tell me why. I said, this is when you, remember when I hit you up and said we need to talk about it? Mm -hmm. This is before this conversation happened. He's hitting me after I told you we need to talk about it. I said, we are actually talking about the fact that no one is talking about it on the podcast tomorrow. And so he said, <clears throat> I think it is the worst contribution from all three of them that I have heard in their careers. Whoa. 
Why does I, he feel that way? Listen, oh no, this is what I mean about how he passed over the Drake thing. He didn't pass over this. I was particularly disappointed in Mad Lib and Yasin Bey. And this is what I mean about he respects the culture. He don't call most most anymore. He calls him Yasin Bey. Of all right. He said, my other hip hop heads all hated it too. And that's I said, wow, okay, I'm going to listen again. What didn't you like? I, and this is where he goes. He said, I thought Mad Lib's production was lackluster with samples often popping up under the vocals. Yasin's verses were completely forgettable. It seemed like Talib was the only one who showed up and took it serious. With the exceptions of a few songs, I thought the new Drake was boring as well. Like the last Snoop record, the last two Nas recordings are probably the best things I've heard in the last year. Okay. And we went further. Yeah. Okay, I think well, there's a whole lot. Been a of, DJ uh, most of his adult life, and he's played he's played black venues, white venues, international venues, weddings, bar, like you name it. He can go into the blackest club or the whitest club, and he can get down. I think that. Hmm. There's a lot to unpack here. First, it's very I wanna, problematic. First, I want to start with the heads, the hip hop heads' um, uh, perception of this new black star album. Well, that's their following, and so that's yeah. why what he said is a big problem because this is your core speech. Yeah. No, no, no. And, and I think that kind of speaks to your point about the accessibility because <laughs> if you're going to make, and this is just my critique, you know, I. I think that the whole luminary idea in theory is actually a dope idea, right? right? But if you're going to do it for such a niche market and the people who have been waiting for the second Black Star album, the Mad Lib bass, the heads, then, man, this is going to sound bad because it's going to sound like you're trapping artists into a box. We'll make something that they're going to appreciate, right? Um... But if you're going to go all out and, you know, make the amazing album that I feel like it was, make, make it accessible to everybody. So like you said, this is where you pick up new people who really aren't familiar with Black Star in that way because they did, in my opinion, some new shit. And I get the whole thing of not go. wanting to be trapped into the business of streaming and that light. But this is the thing, man, like your album, in my personal opinion, deserves to be an album of the year conversation. It's not in those conversations because of the platform it was on. Let's just be real. Oh, hold on. And we're and we're taking it out right now because of that. Because I'm gonna tell you what. No matter what you think or I think, and I'm gonna go back to what we did when we talked about Joe Button earlier, well. Our credibility and our integrity is on the line twice a week. And I'm not about to assign my credibility any longer if you don't want to give it to the masses. Because I think the reason that both you and I rated it so high, Mike, is because we feel like it is innovative and creative and next level. Mm -hmm. The part about it being innovative and creative and next level and people seeing it that way is giving it to a new generation of people that weren't waiting for a Black Star album, because I don't feel like the first album is some indisputable hip hop classic. I was able to listen to this with a fresh ear and a fresh mind. This album needs new listeners, fresh ears and fresh minds. You played yourself. Dumb and Down says, uh, disagree. That Black Star album is amazing. Album of the year so far. And see, this is no. the thing. I feel where you're coming from, Coop, because again, according to hip hop as a platform, the people is hip hop according to you to people and unfortunately a lot of the people got cut out of the process because of the platform that this project is on right. now as you far understand? as i mean do you and here's what i mean about credibility and it's all good like the homie randall has been blasting me in the chat for months now about my take on the black star album like niggas is laughing at me in the chat and it's like you know it's all good love and just just and like he you know we all think of like we're heads we got tough skin we take a lot of cheap shots at each other you know right, what i'm right. saying but it's like no like but randall's making the same point it's like no nah, ain't nobody pumping that shit coop you man feel me? so you know and i and i hate that you and know, I, I hate, hate the that. whole system and i don't right? hate it because he's right i hate it because it's not getting the proper due and well, it's their fault your career is in your hands 
Okay, so you know that... Um... Well, I don't think it's... You know what? This is my thing, and this is why I say I hate the system. Not to cut you off, but <laughs> I just want to get this out before I forget it. I... I hate the fact that, you know, I love the fact that they took ownership, right? I love the fact that they took strides in a streaming era to take ownership of music. I hate the fact that we are in such a, man, we're in a three-dimensional triangle now where it's like you're only going to get your music streaming-wise from three places. And even me, as much as I like the album, and I had Luminary to listen to the album, you know, I didn't renew my Luminary, unfortunately. But for me to go out of my other music apps and go into Luminary to pull this up where it, you know, just, it wasn't as user-friendly as the other ones, all that stuff, you know, it's it's made for podcasts. That's a whole nother thing. But again, like you said, you kind of cut yourself off at the knees, unfortunately, because... I'm going to do all that to listen to it, but not everybody is. And it's so, unfortunate because if this was easily accessible, like you were saying with the Rick Ross stuff, they could have gotten a whole new following. Maybe it was a short-sightedness to say, you know what, we're going to do it on this platform and take ownership, whereas as great of an album as this is, in my opinion, if it was available everywhere we would see Black Star on festival stages, which would make up for all of that other stuff. Well, well, here's what happened. There's a few things. This is what I mean. They gave this album just to the heads that feel like, just like people in chat be like, nah, Coop's still bugging. That first album a classic. Understand, that's your demographic that's trashing this album right now. (coughs) So you actually need more people like me right now that feel like your first album wasn't a classic like that because they would buy into this product more. And I'm going to say this very gently and very carefully. What's that Jay-Z line again where he talking about Nas on the blueprint too? We're going to go back there again. Because <laughs> you don't understand them don't mean any nice. This means you don't understand the bullshit that he writes. Okay, so both of these dudes, part of their image is that humble, conscious guy that you can touch But I keep trying to tell people this. That's just a look in a facade. These two guys are just as arrogant as Jay and Nas. You understand what I'm saying? I think you have to be arrogant to be an MC. No, no, no. Listen to what I'm saying. And even maybe more so, because I want you to understand, neither one of these guys has Jay or Nas credentials. Jay and Nas don't make moves like this. You feel what I'm saying? This is For true. As much as we talk about them, and so, and, and, and I say and this. If, and you know what? And we, we just talked about 444, right? Jay did it where it was like 444 was available on title for a week, and then he made it available for everything else. Right. And that's what I was expecting with this. I was right. expecting at least the first week, if they were going to do it like this, get the luminary thing going, and then boom, make it available everywhere else. You know, it's unfortunate to the music that, you know, is like I said, as dope of an album as this is, and I think it's album of the year, but it's going to be hard to make it, make give it that album of the year claim when most people ain't heard it. I say this in true humility with what I'm about to say. Oh, you can be humble in your faith and be arrogant as hell in other aspects of your life. I'm not only a client, I'm the player president. You understand what I'm saying? And that's what I mean about this whole way that they pitch this. This is like they come off as like the humble, conscious, love the culture, doing it for the right reasons, dude. It's like, no, fam, you ain't no different. You an arrogant asshole like the rest of these rappers are. And Mike, I got like, you know, the Anthony Mason, Charles Oakley, whole Michael Jordan running. I got 30, 40, 50 more stories that's worse with rappers. The rappers are actually worse than the athletes. You feel what I'm saying? And they come in all shapes, sizes, and forms. It doesn't matter about what your religious practices are or what your faith is. An arrogant asshole is an arrogant asshole. And I'm not only a client, I'm a player president. And I would know. And I've been humbled by my faith and still know how I can speak and how I can be sometimes. So just be careful when you're signing yourself up for this because it's like totally honest, Mike. If we're not doing this podcast, I'm not going on Luminary to buy the album. You know what? I might not either. And I'm a Black Star fan. It's just one of those things where it's like, it's not part of your everyday. 
I'm Dang, not. I mean, everybody's busy. Uh, I'm not. Deontay and I Smith. It fairly, but you know, like, Deontay you Smith. Assholes, and you're arrogant. Deontay Smith with the super chat says, uh, "Not gonna, not going the streaming route hurt Donda too." So I'm not sure why Black Star thought that that would be a good idea. I'm sorry. What did you say, Donda? What? Two. Whatever. I, you know, I still haven't heard Donda no, too. That don't exist. That's not a real project. People got to stop. This is what I'm saying. See, like, stop empowering these people to do this foolish shit. But you know what? No, I because disagree they with are. you. I understand no, no, where you're no, coming no, from, but I disagree artists, with the premise. They wouldn't let other artists get away with this. Is because these guys have a certain image, like they gravitate or they deal with the people. It's like, no, they don't. They don't deal with you like you think that they do. As a matter of fact, these dudes avoid you more than the other guys do. Now, see, I th- I guess I'm looking at it from when a different standpoint. When somebody's most, I'm the Change lo- Clothes video? Because he's still that nigga from the Change Clothes video sometimes. Oh, my God. You're never going to let him get no, 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 I'm just saying, the Change like, never Clothes forget. thing. Like, like, man. Now, this is the thing, man. I have no I'm problem. when I see one. That nigga from Brooklyn. I have no problem with artists trying to take on ownership of their own material and the fact that, you know, the streaming platforms don't really give artists their just due financially. And if you have an opportunity where you could do things outside of that, I'm not mad at that. But I do think that at some point, at some point, depending on the type of project you made, if you made something like this, you owe the music itself and its potential fans the opportunity to reach as many people as possible. You and unfortunately, know there needs to be a middle ground and there there should be a situation where these three streaming platforms just don't have a total hold on everything that we hear in the transact in the I'm sorry, the um just how everything buzzes. Now that is problematic. No. Okay, so I feel like this album is going to get pulled up in about 10 years. And people are going to be like, man, this is marvelous. How did we miss this? And, and, and Mike, if we're still around, I don't care if I'm in an office somewhere. I'm going to tweet out because of them niggas. That's why. Just like that, we're going to say because well, you know what? of them niggas. We just got through talking about Wu-Tang, <laughs> right? And I think it's a similar concept when it comes to that million dollar Wu-Tang album. Even though it's not the same thing because those guys didn't know, but just the concept of mm-hmm. this is an album that everybody's not going to get to a chance to enjoy. You know what I right. mean? Right. The only people that enjoyed that album was RZA's bank account. So that's not hip hop. Okay. Dumb and so Dad I'm with not super, hearing it. Dumb and Dad with a super chat says, uh, Rhyme sold, I'd probably be lyrically Talib Kweli. Do y'all think that uh, line was a compliment? I never thought it was. And the whole common sense thing. I thought they should have got mad about that. But hey. No, 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 no. I actually thought that the Talib line might have been a slight shot. I thought the common sense line was more props than a shot. I ain't been rapping say, like common truthfully, sense. Truthfully, I want to rhyme like common sense. But I did five mil. I ain't been rhyming like common sense. It's like, no, I kind of... I mean, I get the play Damn, on even words, if I don't like too. it, I understand. Keep going. As you were. As you were. It's a great... Hold on. It's great usage of literary devices. <laughs> but it's also saying, you know what, dude? You ain't gonna do five mil rapping like that. That's, That's exactly how I took it. it. And if you really want to go... I mean, go pull up the album sales of Commons, like, first five albums. It's probably about five million total. So, that's fine though. You know what I'm saying? You make no, the I'm music cool you want to make. Cool you know, I've always thought that, you know, those lines kind of just try it justified the concept of dumbing it down. And again, if that's what Jay wanted to do, fine. But we're not gonna sit here and do one of those things where it's like, well, he could have did this. Kind of like what Drake did on that one hundred, the game song, where he was like you know, I have all your fans if I stayed on some conscious shit. You know, that right. type of thing. We're not going to give you points for what you say you could have, would have did. This is what you did do. Hold on. And we got to live with all, that. First of all, he never rapped like that in his life. Okay? <laughs> he never rapped like that. You know, like that whole intellectual beat. No, no, no. He's conversational. He's insightful. He's entertaining as hell. He's mm-hmm. charismatic as it gets outside of Big and Pac. But, like... Conscious, like sentiment. No, he ain't been that. Keep trying to thinking back when we first learned to use rubbers. He didn't learn. So in return, I'm kidnapping his baby mother. That's the shit that you got famous for. 
that's super gangster. That's not conscious, nigga. Stop that. Yeah, Common made songs like the song with Lauryn Hill, man. Right, Retrospect for Life. Retrospect of Life, yeah. $65 ain't worth your soul, as in talking about the price of an abortion. Right, yeah. right. He was making, you know what, he was making these records in 1997. You know what I mean? Like, these are these are the subjects that Jay would be comfortable with tackling on 444. Gaining one's definition with CeeLo on the yeah. same album. Yeah. Yeah. Even talking about, hold on, even talking about his popularity increasing with the stolen memories thing about his house being broken into with Q-Tip and Black Thought. It's a frantic yeah. since you No, he's he's touching topic matter on his third album That's that, quite frankly, Jay doesn't touch till 444. Nobody talks about it. Yeah. Uh, Homeboy Blaze says, uh, Rock Marcy has a good, is, uh, I'm sorry, has a good middle ground. He sells and on his website for two weeks, and then he releases it on uh, streaming platforms. And see, that's what I thought they were going to do as well. And there's a lot of people who do that. It's like you go on your website, you know what I'm saying, those first two weeks, boom. Uh, Bag of Jones says, uh, I think he's talking about Mad Lib. Mad Lib naming his album uh, Magic instantly, thinks, uh, instantly think of Nas. Home, oh, is it... Maggie, Maggie naming his album Magic instantly. Like, like Mad Lib, Magic. Hold on, somebody who made a that? very, very good so point. So it's Mad Lib and who? I don't know. Okay. Look, TD made a very good point. Black Star doesn't have a fan base big enough to drop an album exclusively on one platform. That's why I keep trying to tell you. It's like, no, no, no. Well, no, 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 no. Let me rewind. Not even just that, Coop. Not to interrupt you. No, please. You ain't put out an album in 24 years. You can't no. have a fan base. No, let's stop for a second. Like, <laughs> I kept bringing up that fact. I got blasted on this podcast. No, you can't. You can't have a solid. Fa- I mean, I'm, we're no, fans, but, but if you ain't dropped the album in 24 years, how much of a fan am I? I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but when I was saying this, weren't people like literally open season on my ass? It's like, oh, you bugging. Da, 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 da. I'm like, no, nigga, we don't know. It's been 1997. The first album wasn't like that, nigga. I oh, said that. it's Logic and Mad Lib. That's actually happening? Or did that happen? Logic and Mad Lib? Oh. Okay. Okay. Um, so, yeah. All I'm saying is, is that when I said these things, people were looking at me like, what the fuck is wrong with you? It's like, no. What is wrong with you for accepting this? Because all of this acceptance, hold on, all of this acceptance from one sub-genre demographic of hip-hop has elevated them in their minds to a status that they're not. I, I'm, I, I, like, I, love I hate Mobile. to say it like that because I, I love them. You know what I mean? I love and them, and I love, and I love most. And you and I both know this, and I don't say this about too many guys. Most Def is a top 10 talent all time. Yeah. Maybe top five. He's one of the most naturally talented. Maybe MCs top I've five. Ever He's not going to make any top 25 lists of MC that I'm ever going to do. You don't have anything that speaks to you being in the top 25. You don't even have more work than Siegel. Huh. How? And he had so had the promise and everything. And I love most man. Nigga Siegel done been shot, stabbed, went to prison, lost everything, can't like lost his voice. Like and, Paige says, like, uh, no killer priest, papoos, cannabis, uh, Cassidy talk. In terms of did we get around to that killer <laughs> priest album? Was that this year or I think that was this year. Okay. We can talk about the killer priest thing. Like I love killer priest. Lyrically speaking, some of what he does is find the heart of the production that matches it. Yeah. We got to get to this West Side Boogie, man. It's already like 8.30. <laughs> I know. I kind of, yeah, yeah. I wanna but I do the- want to finish up this part of the conversation, man. I mean, listen, I'm really, I'm stuck in a place because if it's just about the music and my opinion and what I know I hear with my ears, I got this Black Star album as album of the year, but this unfortunately, an album as you're gonna hear in a while. But unfortunately, you know, album of the year encompasses more than that, and the people have to be involved in that. And if the people haven't heard it and aren't able to hear it, it's very, it's gonna be a very hard and closed-minded argument for me to make. I don't know. 